Well, hello, RDWorks users. Um, coming at you with a little bit of bad news and good news for you right now. Uh, our machine here, which is basically a Red Sail Clone X700 type uh, machine, has just once again decided to have the X axis home incorrectly again. So basically, the machine head, the laser head, is running itself into the side of the machine, making all kinds of noise, and it's really, really scary and loud. Um, luckily, I've fixed this problem before and ended up being a homing switch, which I'll show you here in a second, that was bad, that I replaced using a part off of Amazon. But in the meantime, I'll walk you through what I have learned to do in order to kind of get around the problem until that part comes in and you can fix it. In the machine you can see you have two homing switches. Um, this guy in the back is really easy to see. He's kind of well lit. That is the homing switch that controls the Y direction. And then there's an identical part number right here and this is the one that controls the X direction. And you'll see they've got little crosses on the top. And basically how these work is they don't have to touch anything. They um, work off a Hall effect so they pick up uh, material. And as the head slides over the top of it it detects that and then stops moving and then it centers the part this line will tell you it'll uh, put zero zero either there or it'll put it there so this little guy in the back takes detects the bottom of this rod goes up to that line and centers it that way this uh, x-axis homing picks up the metal plate that the head is mounted to and it, the edge of this metal plate slides across gets picked up on this line and then it homes it to zero. That's how it's supposed to work. Now the last key bit of this when you're troubleshooting is that the bottom of these uh, sensors are kind of got a clear plastic to them. There's a little red LED in there that lights up to let you know when it has detected something. So the quickest way to know whether it's working or not is basically to go home in X or Y and then see if that red LED is on. And if it's not, you've got probably some kind of wiring problem. Okay, so now that we're back outside of the machine, I'm going to turn it off, turn it back on again, and we'll see if it does the same uh, problem it was before, or you know, if I get really lucky and can't replicate it. So, turn the machine off, and when you turn it on, it resets. I'll click my finger on the emergency stop, so see it sliding across. And there it goes, and it starts clicking into the edge. Now, if I pull this out, maybe because I thought it was an anomaly or something, turn the machine off, redo my emergency stop, turn it back on again, you can see the red LED is on, and it does Y properly, and it has picked up X that time. So that would be a normal reset. over, down, turn off, turn it on again. Once again, you can see the little red LEDs coming on, and then that happens. So you hit your emergency stop, like I said, lots of noise, obviously not good for your machine. Now the way these controllers are set up, they auto home X and Y, and it'll just do that every time it starts up again. So next we'll go to the laptop and show you how you can fix that. All right, now before we get to the laptop, there's one last key step you need to do. So every time you turn the machine on, it's going to like bang itself into the wall and keep doing that because it doesn't pick up that limit switch. So we need to stop it from doing that before we fix it in the software. So here we are looking at the control head. Uh, I've got the machine turned off. I've got uh, the emergency stop reset from last time. So right now it would be like a normal start once you've no noticed that your machine's doing this. So as soon as you turn the machine on, you want to hit the escape button here on the control pad, and that will interrupt its automatic homing of X and Y. So when you see the little resetting button, hit escape, and it'll stop itself wherever it's at. So you want to pull your machine head 
you know, down and far to the left, far from whatever axis it is that's messing up to give you time to hit the escape button. So we turn the machine on, and then we're just going to hit escape as soon as we turn it on. Uh, and I will actually usually do this kind of two-handed. So turn the machine on, connecting to controllers displayed, system resetting, hit escape. Once you hit escape, it stops. So now it's loaded, but it's not going to home X and Y. So leave the machine on, plugged into the, your laptop via USB, and leave it just like this. All right, so now that the machine's on, we just hit the escape button and stopped it. We're plugged into USB. So we open up RDWorks. On the right hand side, you've got all these tabs. And the middle one says user, and this is the user settings for the machine. So we want to hit read, and that'll read whatever user settings are loaded into the machine right now. You scroll all the way to the bottom, and right here it says home para, which is home parameters. The home speed's there, and here you see auto home X, Y, Z, and U. Z and U say no, auto home Y is yes, and auto home X is yes. Now right now I know that my Y axis is working fine, so I'll leave that at Auto Home Y, but my X axis is the one that keeps running into the side of the machine. So I'll hit the drop down box, select No, come down, hit Write, please wait, it writes it to the machine, you can read it again just to make sure, scroll down to the bottom, and now home parameters auto home X is set to no. So now every time the machine turns on it will auto home in the direction we know is good but it won't do it in the direction that's bad. So this at least keeps the machine from running into itself while it's starting up every time you turn the switch on. So we'll go ahead and switch back to the machine and see what it does now. Yeah. Alright now that we're back inside the machine we're gonna go ahead and turn it off and then turn it back on again having just changed those settings in the laptop. So the machine turns off, it turns back on, connecting to controller, and then you see the little red LED underneath the Y axis blink on and off when the bars come over and it does its job. And since we have disabled the X axis, it just stays where it is. So the good news is that keeps the machine from running into itself every time you turn it on. The bad news is it hasn't homed X yet, so it is perfectly possible with the laptop or the controller to just run it straight into the side again because it doesn't know where home is. But what I will do is demonstrate to you, now that it's not destroying itself every time you turn it on, if you move the machine to where you can get a good look at whatever axis it is that is messing up on you. You can move it in slowly and see if that little LED comes on at the bottom of your homing switch. And there you can see if you swing around the back that it lights up, it isn't lit up, and it lights up. Now the first time this happened to me I had an, a sort of a a broken wire that was intermittent so if I came out to like where it is now it would work but if it would start from the back of the machine the wire would be bent to where it didn't make contact because those wires run through the track uh, at the end of the bar so depending on where that wire is broken at will depend where you start to get either these intermittent faults with either a, a failed sensor or since I've replaced one of these before, they actually have 28 gauge wire in them, so it's very, very fine wire, and it just doesn't seem to take well to being in these uh, alligator tracks that are on these machines. So when you find a position where the light does indeed come on, you can move back over a little bit, go back in your controller, and home it manually. So I'll show you that next. All right, so now that we've found a position where we actually do get the red light to come on in X, we come back to the controller, uh, we hit the ZU button, which is in the middle of all your direction arrow keys in the top right, 
and you get this menu that comes up. And it's full of all kinds of settings. A lot of the user settings that were on, uh, like the laptop, but you can do them manually from the machine. So you push the up arrow, it goes to the bottom of the list, it goes to Axis Reset Plus. You push the Enter key to open that menu. And here you can manually do an Axis homing on X, Y, X, Y, Z, or U. So X, Y does both of them, and that's what the machine was doing uh, before this. And now if we come down to X axis reset, this will home the X axis as soon as we push enter. So we push enter, resetting. So now it is homed itself in the X direction. It auto homed in Y when we loaded it. So now it is actually back to uh, it knows what the size of the machine is and where home is, so you can now continue cutting projects while you're waiting for your replacement parts to arrive. All right, well, that's it. Unfortunately, I know it's not a fix per se, but it at least stops the machine from destroying itself while you've got your parts on order or while you can figure out maybe which wire is wrong or if maybe you've got a bad connection into uh, perhaps the controller itself. Again, it's a stopgap measure, but at least it will keep the machine from doing any more damage to it itself. And hopefully, um, when mine broke, it was, of course, right in the middle of a bunch of orders that had to be done. So using the method that I just showed you, I could manually rehome it in a position it did work to finish the orders we had until after about two or three days it was just completely dead. And by then, thanks to Amazon Prime, the replacement sensor had showed up. And it has worked fine for about five or six months until it seems this problem's back again. But a little knowledge goes a long way, a lot less scary the second time, so now it's at least just an inconvenience. Uh, if you uh, want, we'll go ahead and put that part number in the comments later. And again, here's to next time.